Hello, this is Dr. Trevor from Physics This Week, and I'd like to talk with you today a little bit about deflate gate. So the ideal gas law relates the pressure, volume, number of molecules, a thing called the gas constant, and the temperature all to one another. So as you change one of these things, it has effects on all the others, unless you do something to try to keep it uh, one of them constant. For example, if you put something in an insulated container, you're working to try to keep the temperature constant. If you put it in some type of a solid container, you're trying to keep the volume constant. Now one thing with this is that each of these variables must have some type of a measurement that actually can have a minimum of zero. So for example, if you can go to zero pounds per square inch, that would be known as a vacuum. Uh, if you can take the volume down to zero, that means that something like your football is actually crushed flat, as flat as it can get. And the temperature actually is measured in the scale of Kelvin, which is what this K stands for, in which case you can actually go to a value of absolute zero. Something like Fahrenheit or Celsius doesn't quite work, because you have negative temperatures possible with those measurement systems. Now, of course, they're all related to one another, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But first, if we take a look at a little bit of algebra, we take the ideal gas equation and solve it for these three variables. That leaves these two, the number of molecules and the gas constant, uh, as multiplied together, a constant. So if you have a football that you're not going to let any air out of, in that case, the number of molecules is fixed, the constant, of course, is fixed, and these two work together. Now, if you have a case of a football that is not noticeably uh, being compressed, in other words, it doesn't look like it's flat, that's a pretty good indication that the volume is staying constant. So if we divide both sides by the volume, we get down to these three things being a constant, which means that if you have two different pressures and temperatures, as long as this pressure goes with this temperature, then at some other temperature, you'll have a particular pressure. So I've got H and C here for the pressure at a hot, temperature hot is going to be related to the pressure at some cold temperature. And of course, because each of these is equal to this constant in the center, they're equal to each other. Now let's take a look at that, but talk about absolute pressure versus gauge pressure. Gauge pressure is actually me measured relative to uh, the atmospheric pressure, either above or below atmospheric pressure. So if you have a football that has zero pressure, it means it's actually at atmospheric pressure inside and not above. Now, one atmosphere is about 14.7 uh, pounds per square inch. And if you have a regulation football, the minimum pressure is actually about 12.5 PSI. So you can see on the face of this, unless you're talking about that gauge pressure, uh, this value of 12 PSI doesn't really make any sense. So what we actually do is we take these two and add them together. So the absolute pressure is atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure, so the absolute pressure is uh, the sum of the two, which in this case is about uh, 27.2 PSI. Now it should be noted that atmospheric pressure does change. Uh, it can go up, it can go down, depending on whether a storm front's going through. But we will assume for a minute, or for this presentation, that this is a fixed value and it's not going to change appreciably over the course of, say, half a football game. Now again, with absolute temperature versus uh, regular temperature, if you remember from your algebra classes long ago, you may have seen in a formula like this, you may have seen this thing replaced with nine or five ninths or nine fifths, depending on which direction you're going. But if you take the Fahrenheit temperature and subtract 32 degrees from it and look at the ratio of freezing water to boiling water, goes up 100 degrees Kelvin, or excuse me, 100 degrees Kelvin, and that same temperature change is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. 
go through the steps here. Add 273 because zero uh, Celsius is known as 273 Kelvin. You get the temperature in Kelvin. So this part of the equation actually does the conversion from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Add the 273 and you get to Kelvin. Now notice in this, I have dropped off the 0.15 that you often see here because I don't want my numbers to get too long uh, and basically hide the math. So I'm going to round just a little bit here and there. Okay, if you run 70 degrees through this formula, you change it to 21 degrees Celsius with this part of the equation, and then add your 273, you get 294 degrees Kelvin. And if you look at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which those two temperatures might sound familiar from recent events, that's about 10 degrees Celsius or 283 degrees Kelvin. Now, the temperature change on game day was about 20 degrees. That's why I picked these two particular numbers, and they're about the temperatures that you would expect inside room temperature and the game temperature. If you subtract these in Kelvin, you get a temperature change of about 11 Kelvin degrees, or 11 K. Let's take a look back at this guy and work our way through. If we do a little bit of algebra here, multiplying both sides by the same factors and then canceling out everything that we can cancel out, do a little bit more algebra on it, and then put in our numbers, notice here the cold pressure was noted to be about 2 PSI lower, lo, excuse me, lower than uh, it started out at. So we're doing the difference in pressure divided by the, the hot pressure inside at 70 degrees, multiplying it by the hot temperature inside. And that tells us that the cold temperature required to do this is about 92% of the original temperature. Now this means that there's a drop of about 7% uh, here in the overall temperature. And this equates to 272.6 Kelvin. And I'm going to round that to 273 Kelvin. Now, this change in pressure uh, that we saw, this 2 PSI difference, means that the temperature had to change from 294 to 273. So the required temperature change to get two pounds different, or two pounds per square inch difference, is about 21 K. Notice here, these two numbers are quite a bit different. And it's not just a degree or two, it's actually uh, a pretty good uh, change in pressure, or change in temperature there. So in conclusion, if it were 70 degrees Fahrenheit when the ball was pumped up and the pressure was checked, it was about 294 degrees Kelvin. On game day, it was approximately 50 degrees outside, which is around 10 degrees Celsius or 283 degrees Kelvin, which is about an 11 degree drop. And finally, if you actually wanted to drop 21 degrees in order to drop 2 PSI, you would be down at zero degrees Celsius, which is also known as 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 273 degrees Kelvin, which is quite a bit colder than 50 degrees Fahrenheit. The thing to take away from this is that measurement conditions do matter. And if you're going to have a standard, you must state the conditions for the measurement, not just the measurement itself. And it doesn't matter whether this is a professional sporting event or in your own lab. Make sure you know what you're doing and tell people what you're doing when you make a measurement. This has been Trevor from Physics This Week. Have a good day.